Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And the first thing is I have a fabulous announcement. I'm so excited about this. So uh, you guys know we have an annual conference in Columbus every year, November 13 through 15. And I just booked another speaker, Robert Whitaker, the author of Anatomy of an Epidemic. And some of you have read this book. It's been on my recommended reading list forever. Uh, it is about what, what he did. He's a journalist who wrote a book about what happened to psychiatric patients before we drugged them and now what's happening to psychiatric patients in the era of drugging. And so he gets into the history of the drugs and their effect on people and basically shows that the more we drug people, the worse it is. He has a new book coming out at about the time of our conference on psychiatry and informed decision making. I mean, is that perfect or what? So if, um, if Kelly Turner, Radical Remission, Dr. Richard Ablin, um, the great prostate hooks. If that wasn't enough to get you here, we've now added Robert Whitaker. I was so excited when he emailed back and said he would come. So the price of conference tickets goes up every few weeks now until conference time. So get your tickets now. And uh, we have more people signed up now for conference than we did like at mid-September last year. We have a very big crowd. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So I got a couple things I want to talk to you about today. And I'll just start by saying that with all the varying ideas about nutrition, there seems to be one thing that we all can agree on, maybe a few things, and one of them is that eating fruits and vegetables is good for you. No matter how crazy the diet plans are out there, I haven't seen one that's told you that produce is not good. Don't eat salads, right? So we're all agreeing on that. A new study shows that fruit and vegetable intake is related to a lower risk of hip fracture. The study included over 75,000 Swedish men and women between the ages of 45 and 83 who didn't have cardiovascular disease or cancer. They were followed up for an average of 14.2 years. There were 3,644 fractures, most of them in women. The data for fractures was taken from the Swedish patient registry and then lifestyle questionnaires gave uh, the researchers the information about diet. So here's what it said. A third of the subjects reported that they ate more than five servings of fruit and vegetables every day. That's not very many people. A third reported between three and five servings. 28% reported one to three, and 6% said that they didn't eat one serving of fruit and vegetables every day. I'm still astounded at how bad diets are. I mean, you know, this is um, pretty basic stuff. Well, the subjects who ate more than five servings of fruit and vegetables daily had an 88% lower rate of fracture than those who ate no fruits and vegetables daily. And the risk or rate of fracture decreased as the fruit and vegetable intake increased. Again, we keep seeing this dose-dependent effect of things like diet and exercise. And the authors actually wrote, this is a quote, there is a dose response association between fruit and vegetable intake and hip fractures such that an intake below the recommended five servings a day confers higher risks of a hip fracture. Now, the study participants weren't healthy eaters. And it's, I mean, think about it. Only a third of them were eating more than um, five servings of fruit and vegetables a day. And a third said they were eating, you know, one to three or less. So we're not talking about a big cohort of healthy eaters here. And in spite of that, fruit and vegetable intake increase their health, uh, improve their health, and reduce their risk of hip fracture nonetheless. So it's difficult to overstate uh, how important it is to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables daily. And um, I, have, I have some people ask every once in a while, is there too much? I mean, can you consume too much produce? Well, we've been doing this 18 years. We haven't seen anybody in here with asparagus toxicity. So I think I can say with a great deal of assurance, you can eat a lot of this stuff every day and you'll be just fine. So eat more fruits and vegetables. And the medical journals are filled with um, the connection between fruits and vegetables and all kinds of other diseases too. Better bone health, better health. All right. Um, we we'll talk about dehydration. It's been my contention for a lot of years that a lot of people, if not most, are suffering from chronic dehydration. People don't drink enough water. There are not very many health professionals that focus on this issue. And in the plant-based community, people are often told, well, if you're eating a plant-based diet, you're getting enough water in the fruits and vegetables. You really don't need to worry so much about drinking water. Um, and then some people are told, well, let thirst be your guide. You know, if you're thirsty, then you'll know that it's time to drink water and, and uh, you won't have to worry about it other than that. 
But more and more studies are showing the importance of drinking enough water and the various ways in which de dehydration can be an issue in terms of health. Now this particular study goes back to 2002. Researchers looked at the association between fatal coronary artery disease and intake of water and intake of other fluids too. That's one of the reasons I thought this was kind of interesting. The subjects were over 20,000 men and women between the ages of 38 and 100 uh, who were part of the Adventist Health Study. Now none of them had uh, heart disease, stroke, or diabetes at the time that the study began. Uh, and here's what the results were. Participants who consumed more than five glasses of water a day had a lower risk of heart attack than those who consumed less than two. And coronary artery disease and fatal heart attacks increased as the intake of fluids other than water increased. Um, and the associations were independent of factors like age, smoking, hypertension, body mass index, and in women, hormone replacement therapy. Now, one of the, co the contributing factors, what is the relationship here, is we know that uh, factors that influence uh, risk of heart attack are things like blood viscosity, plasma viscosity, and we know that dehydration affects these kinds of factors. Another thing is the authors speculated on the basis of this, and it was a very well-referenced study if you choose to look at it. I always include the, um, uh, the studies I cite and the articles posted in the Health Bracelet Online Library, but they speculated that one of the reasons for early morning heart attacks, that there's a a larger number of heart attacks that happen early in the morning, is that blood viscosity increases overnight because people don't drink water overnight. Now this, is, this isn't to say that you should get up in the middle of the night and drink water, but most people are starting out dehydrated, and then they go for eight hours sleeping, if they sleep for eight hours, where they don't take in any water, and they're really dehydrated by morning. Um, as for why fluids other than water can cause increased risk of heart disease and heart attack, there are several mechanisms. One is that beverages containing caffeine act as a diuretic, and that can include, uh, increase blood viscosity. And then juices and soft drinks can cause fluid to move from the vascular system into the intestines, and that increases blood viscosity as well. Um, and the other thing, juices and soft drinks also increase triglycerides, and higher triglyceride levels are a risk factor for coronary artery disease. And um, the authors again cite several references for these types of statements and report that a higher intake of beverages other than water, uh, such as liquids that have a diuretic effect or caloric beverages, results in an increased risk of thrombosis and atherosclerosis. So here's the thing, bottom line. I've always encouraged people to drink at least 64 ounces of water every single day. Um, and it's on the basis, and more by the way, in some circumstances, but it's on the basis of this, that humans lose about 10 cups of water a day um, as a result of just living. I mean, talking and breathing and sweating and urine and feces and that sort of thing. Relatively easy to replace two cups with food. I mean, if you had a whole watermelon today, it might be a little more than that, but less if you're eating foods like cauliflower. So the other eight cups have to come from somewhere, and that should be drinking water. So a little bit more water, like today it's 90 degrees. I went outside and I ran for an hour. A little bit more water needed today to make up for fluids lost uh, that way. But um, uh, as people age, their thirst mechanism uh, starts to get a little faulty. We salivate when we eat. There are all kinds of things that keep us from feeling thirsty when actually we can still be dehydrated. So the best way to do this is just decide every day I am going to drink 64 ounces of water. Get yourself a couple of nice water bottles and fill them, and you'll know when that water is gone that you have, uh, you have accomplished the goal for the day. So I will continue to talk to people about drinking more water, um, and even if you're eating a plant-based diet, I eat an exclusively plant-based diet, still drinking the 64 ounces of water every day more when I take hot yoga class or run in 90 degree weather for an hour like I did today, all right? Um, before I sign off, uh, I just wanted to point out our beautiful new logo. And so uh, you'll see a gradual change over the next few weeks as our website changes and our slide presentations change. And um, we have a byline we might start using. We have to wait for approval from the government for that. But I really love this. And so I'm very excited to see it start appearing on our food packages and all that kind of thing. So uh, it'll be fun to watch this whole transformation. And this is the first video broadcast we've done uh, that um, uses the new logo. So yay for us. This is kind of a big step for us. All right, that's all for today. Have a great one. I'll be back to you again on Thursday with more news.